Throughout time, men and women have strived to make notable names for themselves. Heroes, villains, martyrs, and tyrants, each leaving a lasting mark to remember. But sometimes, humans have to sit on the sidelines, because we're not the only creatures on this earth making history. That's right. Today, we're talking about some of history's most noteworthy beasts and beings in our top 10 animals in history, right here on Fact Bites. But before we take a walk on the wild side, make sure to give us a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all our new content. Canis lupus familiaris, aka the canine, aka dog. Why wouldn't the first animal up on our list not be man's best friend for the last 30,000 years? With our long mutual relationship, it's no surprise that quite a lot of dogs have been written into our history books. But in order to keep some variety to our list, I'm only going to name a couple that I believe need some recognition. Number one, Toga the dog. 1925, Nome, a small town in Alaska plagued by diphtheria, whose doctor's order of antitoxin is delayed by frozen ports. The only way to deliver the antitoxin is by mail trail from Nanana to Nome, stretching 674 miles. A plan is set in motion for 20 teams of sleds and 150 dogs to be placed along the trail and through a series of handoffs to deliver the antitoxin. The Great Race for Mercy took five and a half days. Nome received the entire shipment of 300,000 units of antitoxin, with the credit going all to one special dog, Balto. Wait a minute, this is about Togo. That's right. You may be familiar with the hero sled team lead, Balto, gaining notoriety by being the last team to deliver the antitoxin, running a total distance of 55 miles. However, Togo's team traveled a distance of 261 miles. Through a worsening storm, temperatures between negative 34 degrees Celsius and negative 40 degrees Celsius, and having to travel eight miles in elevation through what is considered the hardest and most dangerous portion of the run, ultimately handing off the serum to Charlie Oslin, who would then hand it off to Gunnar Kassen, the musher for Balto's team. If you're wondering why you've never heard of Togo, it simply all came down to the press. The name Balto just rang better. But Togo isn't forgotten and is immortalized at the Iditarod Trail Dog Race Headquarters in Alaska. But as far as I'm concerned, all 150 of them were good dogs. Number two, Laika. 1957, the Soviet Union and the United States are two years into the competitive race to space. The Soviets were the first into space with Sputnik 1. The first secretary of the Communist Party, Khrushchev, wants to solidify the USSR's place by sending a living passenger into space. Soviet scientists are given four weeks to churn out a big step for science. Sputnik 2, like Sputnik 1, but modified to hold a small passenger, a dog. That dog being three-year-old, 11-pound, female stray mix breed, soon to be called Laika. She and other dogs went through unethical treatment to prepare for space travel. Kept in confined spaces, given terrible food, and put in centrifuges that mimicked a rocket. Cruel by any other name. On November 4th, 1957, Laika was finally launched into outer space. The Soviets had already determined prior to launch that Sputnik 2 would not be returning. Only five to seven hours into her flight when the onboard sensors stopped indicating any signs of life. The story of Laika, the space dog, became a hit around the world. Except for animal rights groups, Laika's sacrifice was seen as a catalyst towards better treatment of animals as her mistreatment was displayed upon the world stage. In 1964, in Moscow, a monument was erected called A Monument to the Conquerors of Space, commemorating all involved with the Soviet space mission, including Laika as well as in 2008 in the same facility where Laika was kept because nothing says I feel bad about shooting a living creature into the void of space like a bit of shaped metal. Number three, Corporal Wojciech. Not necessarily an officer, but also not a gentleman. March 24th, 1942, the newly formed Polish army, along with thousands of Polish citizens, left the Soviet Union for Palestine via Persia, now Iran. On April 8th of the same year, Polish soldiers met a young Palestinian boy with an orphan bear cub. After buying the cub from the boy, the bear would spend time in a Polish camp before being donated to the 22nd Transport Company. They named the cub Wojciech, derived from the word Wojciech, meaning 
happy warrior. Wojciech grew to copy the soldiers by marching with them, drinking beer, wrestling, and even sleeping with them. Then the Polish army was reassigned to fight alongside the British in their Italian campaign, but they were denied from transporting any mascots, so in order to circumvent that rule, they enlisted Wojciech into their army as a private. On May 16th, Polish and British forces led an attack on the German-occupied town of Cassino, Italy. The artillery division bombarded the area for two days. During the battle, Wojciech would transport a hundred pounds of ammunition to supply the troops. For his efforts and contribution in the Battle of Monte Cassino, Wojciech would be promoted to the rank of corporal. Wojciech would later be stationed in Scotland in 1945, then would end up staying in Scotland at the zoo in Edinburgh. Years after his death, many statues of Wojciech would be constructed in Scotland, Poland, and even Casino, Italy. Number four, Adwaita. When they say age is just a number, they're right. But in Adwaita's case, that number is 255. Adwaita was an Aldabra giant tortoise and lived most of his life in the Alapur Zoological Gardens in India. At the time of his death in 2006, Adwaita was determined to be one of the longest living tortoises on record. Adwaita's birth year was determined to be circa 1750 and born near Aldabra, which is the second largest coral island in the world. 27 years later, a man by the name of Robert Clyde received Adwaita and three other tortoises as a gift. Adwaita lived on Clive's estate in Calcutta until being transferred to the Alpur Zoo in 1875. He spent the rest of his life there, which, when saying it like that, kind of dulls how awesome the age of this tortoise is. When you think about it, he lived before the signing of the Declaration of Independence and through both world wars. Given the fact that the tortoise's bodies are simply built to last, However, in 2012, the genome of a deceased Galapagos tortoise that went by the name Lonesome George was studied. It was found that tortoises possess a variation of genes that allow for DNA repair, immune response, and cancer suppression not found in vertebrates with shorter lifespans. So far, the only way that a tortoise can die is either through illness, injury, and being killed by a predator, which is what happened to Edweta as a crack in his shell caused an infection. Who knows how long he could have gone on for? Why must the good die so young? Number five, Cher Ami. Cher Ami, French for dear friend, was nothing short of a war hero, risking life and limb to save the lives of hundreds of Americans. During the First World War, if you wanted to get any information somewhere fast and discreet, you would send a homing pigeon with a letter wrapped around its leg. Frankly, a weird concept when you say it out loud, but nothing to scoff at. In October 1915, 550 U.S. soldiers were trapped behind enemy lines in a firefight by German opposition and Allied troops that were unaware of the U.S. battalion's location. What is now known as the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, U.S. soldiers were sustaining heavy casualties and were out of ammunition and food. As casualties increased, lowering the battalion of 550 soldiers to 194, in a final attempt, they sent out Cher Ami. As he flew off, he was shot twice by German soldiers but continued to fly back to HQ over 25 miles away in 25 minutes. Even after sustaining a bullet wound to the breast and losing a leg, Cherami managed to save the lives of 194 men. He was then awarded the French Cru de Gras with Palm for his act of service and was later returned to the United States. Number six. This isn't really about a particular animal, but rather animals that were made famous by killing important people. For instance, King Alexander of Greece, technically not a real king since his father and his eldest brother were exiled, which put Alexander in place, but was stripped of his powers. One day, however, he was walking his German shepherd Fritz in his private garden. Fritz was suddenly attacked by a Barbary macaque, a primate. As Alexander ran over to help his dog, he was also attacked and bitten by another primate. Later, the bites became infected, and 23 days later, he died of sepsis. Forever to be remembered as a king that was killed by a monkey. This next one is a bit different, because it technically involves two animals. Aeschylus, the Greek tragedian and titled father of tragedy, also known as a great warrior and at one time accused of murdering his mom as a sacrifice to the gods. And interesting guy, to say the least. He survived it all, only to one day be killed by an eagle dropping a tortoise on his bald head because the eagle mistook him for a rock to crack the tortoise on. I know what you're thinking, and yes, it's true. There's even a legend that he was only outside because he was prophesied to die by a falling object. I don't know. 
what do you think? Number seven, Mr. Magoo. Have you ever heard of an animal that was sentenced to death by the federal government? November 1962, Christmas came early for the Minnesota Lake Superior Zoo, or Duluth Zoo, after a sailor coming from India donated a mongoose to the zoo director, Lloyd Hackle. Hackle graciously accepted the mongoose, mainly due to believing it could have been the only mongoose in captivity in the United States especially one that had a strange affinity for tea with sugar. Eventually, the collected Cobra Killer would be dubbed Mr. Magoo. However, the news of the new addition reached the United States Customs. It turns out that the residency of Mr. Magoo wasn't allowed. Unfortunately, this meant the only sentencing for Mr. Magoo is death. This news, of course, outraged the citizens of Duluth, and a massive protest erupted with the assistance from the town mayor and state senator. As the state's attention grew for Mr. Magoo, through petitions, letters, radio, and television broadcasts, pushing the slogan, No Noose for the Mongoose, eventually it caught the attention of the entire nation. Then, through a Stretching of the rules, the Secretary of Interior, Stuart L. Udall, granted a pardon for Mr. Magoo, revoking his death sentence and granting him non-political asylum, on the condition that he will remain in the country forever how long he remains popular, and if that popularity were to fade, he would be deported back to India. A momentous occasion for the citizens of Duluth, with even John F. Kennedy quoted saying, let the story of the saving of Magoo stand as a classic example of government by the people. The deportation never came, and Mr. Magoo would go on to live at the Duluth Zoo for three years before passing away due to old age. Number eight, Clever Hans. It's already known that there are animals that show incredible ability for memory, language, and problem solving, from the African gray parrot to the common octopus. But what about something a little bit more unconventional. How about a horse mathematician? Circa 1891 to 1904, enter Wilhelm von Austin, mathematician and amateur horse trainer, and his star pupil, Clever Hans, or Hans to his friends. Hans was a horse, of course, that was acclaimed to possess an incredible amount of intelligence, performing acts of arithmetic, spelling, and identifying musical tones and colors, paraded around Germany by Wilhelm, performing free of charge to anybody that would stop and watch the genius horse. Hans caught worldwide attention. But in accordance with a showcase of extraordinary comes the usual skepticism. With this skepticism came many investigators and psychologists to study and debunk Hans. Thus, the Hans Commission was formed composed entirely of horse experts, psychologists, and philosophers with the goal of investigating Hans. After finding nothing that could debunk Clever Hans' abilities, they handed the investigation over to Oscar Funks, a psychology student who ultimately solved the secret behind Hans' genius. Through no one's fault, Hans was only responding to subtle and involuntary cues by Wilhelm. While Hans may not have been a genius in the perceived sense, what he was doing would become a basis for the studies in the cognitive abilities in animals, as well as the observer expectancy effect. In layman's terms, that's when a researcher subconsciously influences a subject's behavior to exhibit the effect that they are hoping for. With the case of Hans becoming its own psychological phenomenon called the Clever Hans Effect. Despite his revelation, Wilhelm would continue to travel in Germany and perform with Hans until Wilhelm's death in 1909 and then subsequent mysterious disappearance of Hans. At least he'll live on in our hearts, minds, and history books as once the smartest horse that ever lived. Hans down. Number nine, the Gombe Chimpanzee War. As the Union General Tecumseh Sherman once said, war is hell. I assume when he said this, he didn't include a possible war between two rival tribes of chimpanzees. If he did, I got some great news. Jane Goodall, the foremost expert on chimpanzees, documented the beginning and end of the Gombe Chimpanzee War, occurring in the Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania starting in 1971, when a large community of chimpanzees separated in two communities, most likely due to the death of a former leader, followed by the power struggle between three alpha males and a scarcity of female chimpanzees. They would come to be known as the Kahama and Kasekala tribes. After the separation, the two tribes merely showed feats of intimidation and strength by traveling in large packs of males, howling and showing teeth. It wasn't until 1974 the first chimpanzee was killed, one called Godi 
from the Kama tribe, attacked by a war party of six chimps from the Kasekala tribe. Over the next four years, this tactic was used by the Kasekala to wipe out the rest of the Kama. The fact that most of the males on the Kahama tribe contracted polio didn't help. Then, as the Kasekala tribe moved into neighboring territories, more skirmishes began with other chimpanzee tribes, until eventually, everything just died down. Thanks to the observations and reporting by Jane Goodall, this would become the first documented case of animals waging war on each other, which at the time was perceived to be only possible by humans. Ironically, we're still the only ones that have resorted to guerrilla warfare. Number 10, Emu War. Okay, this war isn't exactly the same as the last one because this time it's man versus animal. And you'll be surprised how this one turns out. November 1932, Australian war veterans were given land by the Australian government to start farms in the western part of Australia. Emus were already an issue in Australia to begin with, but due to the longevity of World War I and most, if not all, of the male Australians leaving to fight, the emu population flourished like some weird biblical plague, with the emus right out of breeding season and 20,000 strong, they migrated west. They not only ate and destroyed the crops, but due to a drought, they also drank and polluted a lot of the water supply. What are ex-soldiers meant to do to combat this invading force? How about two Lewis guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition? With the okay from the defense minister, Sir George Pierce, and the leadership of Major Wynne Aubrey Meredith, that's exactly what happened. With the assistance of the military, the culling of emus turned out to be quite a difficult task. Through two attempts using tactical ambushes to just randomly opening fire with the Lewis guns, the emus were quite evasive. After one month, one week, and one day, and a rounded count of 986 emus, the Australian government called off the war and recalled the military, ultimately ending the war with the emus claiming victory. Truly a tragic defeat, but through an established bounty system, the emu population was slowly brought down to where they were no longer considered an invasive species. And that's our list for the top 10 animals in history. Were there any animals that surprised you? Are there any other animal topics you'd like us to cover? Let us know in the comment section below and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.